Welcome to Daily Prayer, a ministry of the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We'll be here with you every day throughout the COVID-19 emergency. I'm Pastor Bob Schaefer. It's good to see you. Today is Thursday, May 14th, the Thursday before the sixth Sunday of Easter. Let's take a moment of silence now as we begin. We begin with a lighted candle. A candle burning in the darkness has long been a symbol of hope. We light this candle as a sign of our strong hope that God is with us no matter what comes. The candle also reminds us that Jesus said we would be lights for the world. We're called to live generously and graciously, taking care of one another in the name of Jesus. Please join me if you'd like in lighting a candle in your own home now. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to the words of Holy Scripture, beginning with Psalm 66. Shout out praise to God, all the earth. Praise our God, you nations. Loudly proclaim his praise. He preserves our lives and does not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, tested us. You purified us like refined silver. You led us into a trap. You caused us to suffer. You allowed men to ride over our heads. We passed through fire and water, but you brought us out into a wide open place. I will enter your temple with burnt sacrifices. I will fulfill the vows I made to you, which my lips uttered and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will offer up to you fattened animals as burnt sacrifices, along with the smell of sacrificial rams. I will offer cattle and goats. Come, listen, all you who are loyal to God. I will declare what he has done for me. I cried out to him for help and praised him with my tongue. If I had harbored sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. However, God heard. He listened to my prayer. God deserves praise, for he did not reject my prayer or abandon his love for me. And we continue in the book of Genesis, chapter 6. But the Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind had become great on the earth. Every inclination of the thoughts of their minds was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made humankind on the earth, and he was highly offended. So the Lord said, I will wipe humankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, everything from humankind to animals, including creatures that move on the ground and birds of the air, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a godly man. He was blameless among his contemporaries. He walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was ruined in the sight of God, the earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and indeed, it was ruined, for all the living creatures on the earth were sinful. So God said to Noah, I have decided that all living creatures must die, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am about to destroy them and the earth. Make for yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and out. This is how you should make it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for the ark and finish it, leaving eight inches from the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am about to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under the sky all the living creatures that have the breath of life in them. Everything that is on the earth will die. 
but I will confirm my covenant with you. You will enter the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. You must bring into the ark two of every kind of living creature from all flesh, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Of the birds after their kinds, and of the cattle after their kinds, and of every creeping thing of the ground after its kind, two of every kind will come to you, so you can keep them alive. And you must take for yourself every kind of food that is eaten, and gather it together. It will be food for you and for them. And Noah did all that God commanded him. He did indeed. And finally, we turn to the Acts of the Apostles, the 27th chapter. When we decided we would sail to Italy, they handed over Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. We went on board a ship from Adramitium, and that was about to sail to various ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and put out to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius, treating Paul kindly, allowed him to go to his friends so that they could provide him with what he needed. From there we put out to sea and sailed under the lee of Cyprus, because the winds were against us. After we had sailed out across the open sea, off Cilicia and Pamphylia, we put in at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found a ship from Alexandria sailing for Italy, and he put us aboard it. We sailed slowly for many days and arrived with difficulty off Cnidus. Because the wind prevented us from going any farther, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salmon. With difficulty we sailed along the coast of Crete and came to a place called Fair Havens that was near the town of Lycia. Since considerable time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them. Men, I can see the voyage is going to end in disaster and great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion was more convinced by the captain and the ship's owner than by what Paul said. Because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there. They hoped that somehow they would reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete facing southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. To be continued. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that we've been refreshed by God's word, let's take some time to pray together. I'd like to invite you to pray out loud with me. Please don't be embarrassed or awkward that you're praying with a video screen. I'm praying with an empty room right now. And yet, despite the strangeness, our technology is joining us together right at this moment in prayer, no matter when and where we are. So in that spirit, let's pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. 
keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Almighty and merciful God, you are the only source of health and healing. You alone can bring calmness and peace. Grant to all of our neighbors who are ill an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you. In their pain, weariness, and anxiety, surround them with your care, protect them by your loving might, and grant to them once again the gifts of health and strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of earth and air, water and fire, height and depth, we pray for those who work in danger, who rush in to bring hope and help and comfort when others flee to safety, whose mission is to seek and save, serve and protect, and whose presence embodies the protection of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Give them caution and concern for one another, so that in safety they may do what must be done under your watchful eye. Support them in their courage and dedication that they may continue to save lives, ease pain, and mend the torn fabric of lives and social order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, support and strengthen all those who reach out in love, concern, and prayer for the sick and distressed. In their acts of compassion, may they know that they are your instruments. In their concerns and fears, may they know your peace. In their faithful serving, may they know your steadfast love. May they not grow weary or faint-hearted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you are near us, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then, Take us by the hand into each day that lies ahead, for where you lead, we can confidently go with Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Each day I like to share with you one good thing, a bit of hopeful news, a moment of beauty, a tip to help you through the day. Of all the things that are hard about this pandemic, one of the cruelest is the way it has required hospitals to carefully separate those who are hospitalized from visitors outside who love them. New Jersey resident John Lynch recently went through the heartbreaking process of saying his last goodbye to his dad via FaceTime. As hard as that was, he was grateful for the technology that allowed him to look into his dad's eyes as they spoke. John was surprised to hear that nurses in hospitals and in care facilities are often now using their own phones to help loved ones have this kind of connection. Through his charitable foundation, John set out to make a difference. He's gathering donated iPads for healthcare facilities, more than 60 of them so far, giving patients the tremendous gift of seeing the people that they miss so much. And that's one good thing for today. Do you have a good thing you'd like to share with the world? Send us your photos and videos by going to bit.ly slash mygoodthing and share your tips and stories with at Pastor Schaefer on Twitter. I can't wait to hear from you. That'll do it for now. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us. We hope it's been a blessing. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tell your friends about us. Stop by and visit us online anytime at goodshepherdlife.org, and please consider making a gift to support our ongoing ministry. You'll find our PayPal address on the screen and in our program notes. Stay well, be of good cheer, and be kind to one another. I'll see you tomorrow.